today we are going to talk about the blood blood supply to the brain central nervous system now blood supply to the brain before we really start about the anatomical aspect i want to know that how much percentage of the cardiac output goes to your central nervous system everyone knows that heart is normally producing about 5 liters of blood per minute is that right left ventricle cardiac output per minute is about 5 liters so out of that 5 liter blood which is produced which is the cardiac output normally in a resting person how much is really going to the central nervous system 15% that's very good so about 15% 15% of the cardiac output is devoted to the central nervous system is that right now we have to see how it really goes there fine let's suppose here is your from where we should start the study from the arteries going to the central nervous system or we should start directly from the heart let's start from the heart from the left heart let's suppose this is your left atrium and this is your what is it aorta right aortic arch and uh, here is yes please brachiocephalic trunk that's good and here is your very good left common carotid artery and here it is yes left subclavian right now blood which is going to the central nervous system that is going through two systems right one is called carotid system and second is vertebro basilar system now when we talk about carotid system you know common carotid arteries as they are going upward right they go into what is this carotid sinus and from there there are external carotid and internal carotid right so these are your internal carotid arteries which are headed to central nervous system right so one source of blood supply to the cent one of the major source of blood supply to the central nervous system especially to the brain is internal yes carotid arteries is that right and second source is that there are vertebral arteries which are taking origin from yes subclavian system right vertebral arteries let me make them green but they are not green in fact right so these are vertebral arteries and vertebral artery initially move upward they they are posterior way posterior to the carotid system and eventually they turn medially and yes they will move from here also from the left side move upward this is which artery yes please vertebral artery that's good and vertebral artery of the left side also moves medially right and eventually behind behind the carotid system they ascend upward and eventually move meet together and then yes now this is vertebral artery system right and of course this is right vertebral artery and this is left vertebral artery and this is also supplying to the central nervous system now when we talk about the blood flow to the brain now we have seen that there are two systems one is your carotid system which is also called anterior system which is also called anterior system other is vertebro basilar system which is also called posterior system right so we can say there is anterior system which is carotid system and posterior system which is vertebro basilar system right now first we will discuss into detail vertebro basilar system and after that we will discuss into detail the carotid system supplying the brain now let's go to the vertebro vertebral system now when we talk about vertebral system 
these are the cervical vertebra i'm making a very simple diagram of cervical vertebra is that right what are these transfers processes a very important thing is that in the transverse processes there are foramina in cervical vertebra in the transverse processes there are foramina and through these foramina yes which arteries are going up vertebral arteries that is an important point that when vertebral arteries take origin from subclavian system they move upward and medially they reach to the transverse processes of cervical vertebrae and through the, in the within the transverse processes of cervical vertebrae there are foramina they go through those foramina upward is that right and then through the foramen magnum they enter into cranial cavity now through the foramen magnum when they enter into cranial cavity you know they will keep on moving upward and eventually move medially and through the foramen magnum they will go into cranial cavity right now when they enter through the foramen magnum into cranial cavity right exactly at which space they are these arteries are located again listen to the question uh you know there is central nervous system around that there is pia mater outside that there is subarachnoid space then outside that there is arachnoid mater and then there is dura mater okay let me tell you in a where is a very very simple diagram central nervous system yes you will tell me what is it just adjacent to it hurry up yes pia mater outside that what is here yes arachnoid mater and what is the subarachnoid space full of csf that's good very good and then of course all of you must be knowing outside there is dura mater so very simple diagram right now the question is that when carotid system enters in the cranial cavity and vertebral system enters in cranial cavity the major arteries which are supplying the central nervous system those major arteries including the circle of villus they are present exactly in which area area number 1 area number 2 area number 3 area number 4 look area number 1 is that space space between the dura and arachnoid or area number 2 is subarachnoid space or location between the pia and the central nervous system but usually there is no space there because pia is very faithfully applied with that and then within central nervous system i want to know that when arteries enter into cranial cavity as carotid arteries internal carotid arteries enter as vertebral arteries enter and in the end we'll discuss their circle of villus form all these major arteries are located in which area so, yeah you think that all of them are present in uh, subarachnoid space you mean that circle of villus is floating into no. csf no. yes you have any different idea you think it is subdural space space number 1 okay people who believe it's space number 1 raise your hand okay this uh, and people who believe it's space number 2 people who believe it's space number 3 <laughs> and people who believe it's space number 4 okay me, four people four were sure wrong absolutely because these are the small branches which enter here okay listen the right answer is that all the artery major arteries in circle of villus they are really floating into csf <laughs> is that right you have to remember it it means you don't know exactly where the circle of villus is there where the major vertebral arteries basilar arteries and and internal carotid artery and their major branches where they are present they are present outside the central nervous system and of course outside the pia mater these major vessels are present into which space subarachnoid space position number 2 why it is so important to know because you may be knowing that there are special type of aneurysm called berry aneurysms right these are for, these are specially present very commonly in the circle of villus they rupture and when they rupture berry aneurysm they produce a hemorrhage in 
subarachnoid space. space. That's the clinical importance. This is the minimum a student should know about the blood supply to the central nervous system. That major vessels going to the central nervous system, which are carotid system and vertebral system, and eventually making circle of villus. All this major arterial system is present in subarachnoid space all the time floating in CSF. Is that clear? Right. So what I was, why I asked this question? Because I was telling vertebral arteries are going upward through the foramina present in transverse processes of cervical, not thoracic, cervical vertebrae. And eventually they go medially, right? Of course there should be something called skull over here with foramen. Suppose this is the skull, again very simple diagram, this is foramen magnum, right? So naturally these vertebral arteries through the foramen magnum will enter into cranial cavity. Now I told you where the major vessels should be in which space? Subarachnoid space. So it means they must pierce dura mater. They must go through dura mater. Right? Then major artery should pierce arachnoid matter and then appear into subarachnoid space. There the major vessels are there and from there the final small branches are going on into brain substance. Am I clear to everyone? Okay. Uh, let's go into detail of vertebrobasilar system, right? First we'll study posterior system and then we will talk about interior system. Why it is so important to know, know the blood supply to different parts of the brain? Because one of the very common cause of neurological admissions in USA hospital is neurological dysfunctions produced due to vascular problems. The commonest cause, commonest causes of neurological dysfunction are vascular events, right? And you must know which part of the brain is supplied by which artery and which artery will be disturbed and what type of clinical problems and neurological dysfunction will appear in patient's system. Let's come back. We are going to talk about vertebrobasilar system and let's draw a simple diagram. You know brain stem? How many of you know brainstem very well? Brainstem comprises of? Yeah, what is that? Midbrain, right? You can recognize it, good. And then what is that? Yeah? Pons, I think this is a bit asymmetric in my case. And then what is under it? And here it is? Spinal cord, right? What is this? Pontomedullary? Junction and of course pyramids here and olives here. Here is bones, midbrain. Right. Okay. This is the interior aspect. Brainstem is looking to you. Right. So that you really understand it is looking to you. It's the interior aspect of the brainstem. And we have to explain the arterial system in reference to this. Okay, before we really go, what is the structure here? Cerebellum. And this is the yeah, under surface of cerebellum. Is it clear? Now, already you know that vertebral arteries have been moving like this on the sides, right? Through those foramina, no fun in explaining those. Those, we have discussed it already, right? And you know from where they are coming? From subclavian arteries. As they reach to the lateral side of the lower part of medulla, they start moving to the medial side. Right? So what we say, vertebral arteries here, they have gone to the medial Yes. Now, and these vertebral arteries meet each other at the pontomedullary junction. Right and left. Again, what we see? Vertebral arteries are going up through the transverse foramina. Not foramina and the transverse processes. Of the cervical. Then they move medially 
the path through foramen magnum pairs the dura mater and arachnoid mater appear into subarachnoid space then they move forward upward and medially over medulla right and both vertebral arteries meet each other at what point what is this point ponto medullary junction and they are they move upward as one united trunk which is called basilar artery right which is called basilar artery right so and then what really happens at this point this basilar artery divides into terminal branches right and these terminal branches yes what are they called these are going posteriorly you know they are hooded headed backward so they are going posteriorly and we call them posterior cerebral arteries posterior cerebral arteries now this is the basic structure of vertebro basilar system right the vertebro basilar system has its origin in subclavian arteries ascending two major branches as right and left vertebral arteries they meet together at ponto medullary junction and then this united trunk becomes basilar artery right and basilar artery just above the what are these don't tell me eyes there are no eyes there this is third cranial nerve region you know oculomotor nerve that comes out from this point outward you just see these these are third nerve so just above the third nerve exit from the brain stem from the mid brain right their basilar artery divided into its terminal branches two terminal branches which are right and left posterior cerebral artery okay posterior cerebral artery supply which part of the brain posterior part of the cerebral hemisphere but please mention at least mid brain they are moving around near the mid brain isn't it then of course they go to the back of the cerebral a hemisphere we'll talk about that later now this is the basic structure right now we bring the branches important branches number 1 yes from here branches come from vertebral artery from lower part of vertebral artery in front of medulla branches come right and left they unite together and then they descend in the anterior median fissure of spinal cord what is this branch coming down anterior spinal artery anterior spinal artery right so where the anterior spinal artery originate it originate in front of the medulla from the contributory branches of vertebral arteries which move medially and in front of the lower part of medulla they make anterior spinal. spinal spinal artery which descends downward yes descend downward in the anterior spinal yes anterior or medial anterior spinal fissure is that right now uh this is this first branch after that other important branch is yes from here another branch yes who will tell me the name of this branch posterior inferior cerebral artery you know so much that's good but don't forget it supplies the medulla also because this is important point if people forget this supplies the lateral part of medulla also and this is called posterior inferior yes cerebral artery pica what is the meaning of pica no pica is a pica is a term used in psychological eating disorder there is a special type of eating disorder which is a psychological disturbance called pica yeah some people start eating the clay or soil or pica okay you know pica so pica is actually defined as an interest in special interest eating the non nutritive things 
You cannot understand that because sometimes you have to get pregnant to understand it. <laughs> pregnant females sometimes get this trouble that they suddenly develop an urge to eat the things which are not nutritive. Right? That is a psychological disorder which is called Pika. Is that right? And one of my friends who was always afraid of his wife, when his go wife got pregnant, he ran away from home. I said, why? He said, my wife has developed Pika. I said, but why you run away? He said, she may be, might be interested in eating my brain. <laughs> right? So that is not the right situation. Pika means posterior inferior cerebral artery. Now, uh, first I will talk about interior spinal artery and its territory of supply and then about this. I will make the spinal cord section here. Yes, I hope you recognize the component. Am I clear in this diagram? This is to posterior root, interior root. Okay. Now, Anterior spinal artery is basically lodged over here and descending here. This diagram is very important. That how much part of the spinal cord is supplied by the anterior spinal artery? Actually, this is anterior, yes. Yes. Anterior two-third of the spinal cord. Interior two-third of the spinal cord is uh, supplied with the blood from interior spinal artery. It means if interior spinal artery is blocked, that then interior two-third of the spinal cord at that level of the blockage will undergo infarction, necrosis. Is that right? Undergo ischemia. And if ischemia is severe, that may lead to the death or necrosis of that part of spinal cord. So what really happens, that anterior spinal artery supplies about anterior two-third of the, what? Spinal cord, right? Another important thing. Of course, there is not so much blood coming from here that it will supply all the down. Rather, there are special branches which are called segmental arteries which are coming at multiple levels to reinforce the blood flow to the interior spinal artery. Do you know that? The segmental arteries. Because in the spinal cord, if interior spinal artery starts from here and goes down, right, it does not have enough blood to supply all the spinal cord interior two-thirds. So it is reinforced, right, from certain branches which are coming from arteries which are outside the vertebral column and they are giving branches to the anterior spinal connect special supply to the anterior spinal artery so that added blood flow sh should come there and spinal cord should be properly nourished right so let's suppose this is one artery 